Hey everybody, uh, I decided to go ahead and do a request from somebody to show you guys how I draw my duck faces. Um, originally I had set up to do it digitally and I couldn't get the file to work after I'd recorded it so I was super bummed but I was like no I'm going to do this request for you guys so I figured it out and now I'm just going to do it this way traditionally so um, I do do a lot of erasing even when I'm just sketching so I apologize for that and the camera does kind of go in and out of focus quite a bit and again I apologize for that as well but um, I think you guys will learn a little something about kind of my process um, from this video so let's go ahead and get straight into it. Now the first thing I do when I'm going to do any of my anthropomorphic characters is I always start with your basic circle. Big deal, right? But it actually helps a lot. So I've got my circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And then I just kind of decide which direction the head's going to go in. So my character is actually going to be looking in this general direction. So then I just kind of add and do this. You guys see where I'm going with this, don't you? You can probably tell right now. It kind of looks like it's leaning backwards, but I think it's just my camera angle because it looks pretty straight to me. But you know, sometimes leaning backwards happens too. Let me see if I can adjust my camera angle so it's a little bit more true to life. <laughs> There we go, that's a little bit better. It's still a little bit leany, but it could also be the angle I'm looking at. It. Um, but here we go. But you guys see what I'm doing here is it's basically a human head. If you were to just toss a nose here and some eyes, it's a human. That's, that's how I do it. So since it's not a human, we get rid of that. And we start with um, kind of a different a similar but different approach so we've got our head this is the head and we've got our direction right here all right so right here where this crosses that's where I always put the bridge of my nose no matter what character I am doing whether it be a mouse a duck or whatever so and I'm, I'm just so finicky about getting that right I start here now, typically what I do is I'll come out here and I'll draw where my bill's going to be. But for you guys, what I would suggest doing initially until you kind of get the feeling of how far away the bill's going to be from your character is I would draw the beginning line here, which is kind of the, um, the bridge of the bill, and then kind of draw. Now, I always kind of go a little exaggerated with my bill here, <laughs> but I feel like it gives it a little bit more life when I do that. So I exaggerate it bring it in and then I draw a pouty lip now if you notice here I've already drawn the chin I just bring it down to there and there we go and then I bring this into the neck and then I connect that now I have a little smile going here now if you think of this this little bump here where the where the bill is if you think of that as sort of a um, guide to take your the bridge up then you kind of get the placement for your eyes so you've got one here and then of course you're gonna have one on the other side now the way I draw my eyes is I always kind of the triangles <laughs> for my anthropomorphics I tend to go with triangles with my humans I tend to go more oval but I always go kind of with a triangle shape and then this right here would be like the cheek on both sides and then eyebrows I put eyebrows on my characters some people don't I do got my triangle here this one's not as much of a triangle but and then I do this and then I always add eyelashes because this is a female duck so she's gonna have eyelashes and then pupils like you would any other critter and there we go so that is how I do my duck heads now here's where things get a little different. Now I draw my eyes like so and I make sure I have nice, I always like having nice thick eyelashes on my duck characters. And then here where the cheek is, this is where I take my feathering. So we're, we're just going to say that for the sake of argument this is Piper. Piper has defining characteristics when it comes to her design. 
So she kind of has a bit of a pouty lip, softer chin, neck, and then she has three feathers here every single time. I know it's hard to see because of the head there, so I'm going to erase the back of the head so you guys can see. Always one. Oh, see, I'm messing it up. Her top one always points down, so it's always one, two, three. Down, up, up. And then it's the same on the other side as much as you can see. Typically, I don't draw this in there, even though technically you could see it from the bill. But if I, if I was coloring this, it would be in there. I would add it in just because I like the idea that you see that it goes on both sides like this. But um, I leave that out in my sketching just because, I don't know, it just, it doesn't, it feels forced. It doesn't feel natural. And then... Um, her hair. Now with my anthropomorphic ducks, they always have hair, but since they don't have ears, I try not to pull the hair back too much. Um, and when I do, I just try to make it to where it's going over where an ear would actually be, which would be right about here. Just to avoid that awkwardness of not having ears. But anyway, so here we go. Now, as far as necks go, I know some people like to draw legit duck necks that kind of go like this they have a bend to them and then they go into a body I don't do that I just draw human necks onto basically human bodies my ducks are 90% human and our only duck it would appear in bill and in face so when we clean this up this is kind of what we're left with now her she's a little bit long over here she typically is not I can always bring that in and stuff like that so it's always adjustable. You can always erase. It's no big deal. And then she always wears that. And this is basically Piper. And this is basically how I draw my ducks. Um, my duck faces anyway. And you can always vary this. Now, this is just me drawing like a standard human head. Now, you can always, always, always get more creative by changing the shape of the head. So say it's a male and he's very blocky. There we go. And then we draw our lines, see what direction. So maybe he is just like this. And then he has like a massive jaw. Launch, launch pad is actually very similar to that. You can always adjust for that. And then you can give him like little eyes here. You can always change the shape of the eyes, too. They don't have to be big, gigantic boo eyes like what I draw. I do hope that this video isn't as... If I feel like it's blurry, but I'm trying so hard to not move too much. Um, you don't even have to really go in there and add feathers if you don't want to. Um, just sometimes the, the cheekbones are enough to give them that definition that you need. So here we go. We got ourselves a pretty fine looking male going here uh-huh 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 you could just leave it at that almost i mean it kind of looks more like a pelican but we'll just say he's a duck i think that launch pad looks like a pelican too but we won't get into that but yeah there we go and then just add some hair give him some fabio hair here because you know we like our fabios give him a little bit of definition there and there we go. I mean, there you go. And you can give him nice big old thick muscular neck. You can do whatever you want. But see how just changing the shape of the face changed the character altogether? So, I mean, what if you want someone who's, you know, just... I still don't like the angle of this camera. It's just driving me up the wall. I'm, I apologize for this. It's just a quick video, though, because somebody asked, and I kind of really wanted to deliver. If you had, like, a circle... And then a circle. Say that we've got a, a like a Herb Muddlefoot going on here. Just a character that's a little bit rounder. And you give him a small bill that completely and drastically changes the entire build of the character. Now all of a sudden you've got a character who's got weight to them. And it's awesome because you can just keep every just stop and think of all the different shapes of people and their heads and then apply it towards your anthropomorphism if you will i don't even know if that's a term i think i just made it up but whatever so like you know 
you can go crazy with this. I mean, there's just as much variation in this uh, style of art as there is in human art. You just kind of got to go out there and look for it, you know, you know, experiment. See what you come up with. It's really, really fun. It's really, really amazing. And I say as long as you're learning from it, it's all good. See, like, this is a character. Like, who is this? We just, this person just came into being all of a sudden. I say person, I mean duck. But it's okay because, you know, you guys know what I mean. You know? Oh, let's give her pigtails. How about that? She's got cute little pigtails. And what I like to do, and it's with my females. Again, it's that weird thing where they don't have any ears. Is I just pull the hair down, and then if they've got cheeks, I tend to hide and tuck everything behind the cheeks because that's the easiest way to do it. Because I can't explain. They don't have ears. They just, they don't. So here we go. And then we got ourselves a new character. Completely original. Completely different from, say, Piper. And I think she's adorable. So that's how I do my ducks, guys. I mean, legit, it's basically a human body, even a human head. I just change it. And I always, and I know I didn't draw the lines here. Keep in mind that this, this is your biggest guide. This guide right here is going to tell you where the start of that bill goes and where it protrudes out from the character. This guide right here, that little cross. That's always going to help you. And after a while, as you just saw, you don't need it as much anymore. The more practice you get doing it, the less you need it. So, you know, you can eyeball things too and still still get some pretty awesome looking stuff. But yeah, there we go. So, I hope that helps. Um, I hope it explains some stuff, clears some stuff up. Um... If you guys have any more questions, I mean, by all means, feel free to ask. I mean, that's what I'm here for. I try to answer everybody. Um, and I did mention that it's how I draw my mouse characters, too. So real quick, I'll just draw a quick mouse character. So you guys can see that it's versatile towards other critter critters as well. So we still have that same thing right here with the cross. I just start here with the nose and then with my mouse characters... I just kind of measure out, like if they've got a longer nose, I go further away. If they have a shorter nose, I go closer towards this bridge. That's right here. It's the exact same bridge. And then I just keep in mind that it would actually be going down, and that would kind of be where my lips meet, or my my the cupid's. It's called the cupid's um cupid's bow, I believe, something like that. And that's where it is for my female. So I just kind of keep that in mind when I'm drawing, and then I add in eyes because I kind of know where they're they are now I don't put typically cheeks on my uh, mouse characters I used to but I don't anymore I just kind of leave it like this because it's cleaner and then we do this and then we add some eyebrows and we add some eyes and then we add just those adorable ears check it now her, these are some pretty big ears but hey every you know maybe she's got some big ears who cares and I do tend to go towards females when I'm drawing I apologize for that too but you know it works for males too same thing same concepts it's kind of a piper but it's kind of not looking too much like her I apologize for my Skype noises I thought I turned them off but it turns out I did not I am a bad videoist but there we go. And then when we clean it up, it kind of looks a little bit better. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always, always, always encourage you guys. Just go ahead. This That cross is really your guide. That's the thing that's going to make or break you. It's going to make things easier on you. Just make sure that you always go off that cross. And you should be able to, you know, pretty easily after a while of practice, uh, be able to start doing your own anthropomorphic characters relatively easily i just keep in mind that i use my human bases it helps it really really helps because it's something i enjoy to draw as humans as well so i just kind of bring those elements into this and yeah it's not true anthropomorphic art and i understand that but it's still fun and 
it's still, you know, it gets the point across. You know, clearly this here is a mouse. Clearly this up here is a duck. And this is a duck pelican hybrid of some kind. And this is clearly a duck. So I hope that that helps you guys out a little bit and I hope it clears some stuff up and kind of gives you a little bit of insight as to how I do my sketching and how I kind of do my character building and sort of like my design work. Um, I don't, to me, it's just, it doesn't feel like anything special, but I know that it wouldn't have been requested if somebody wasn't legitimately curious. So I hope it helps and I hope that it inspires you guys to draw because I'll tell you what, drawing... Drawing is amazing, and I love it so much. So much Fabio Duck. Ugh. Yes. But anyway, I hope it helped, and if you guys liked what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe below, leave a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those. I'll do my best to answer them as best as I can. And, oh, she's looking kind of weird. And, um, yeah. I try to. Um, sometimes I get overwhelmed, and I'm like, I don't know who to answer first. And then I just kind of ignore them, because I'm like, no. Yeah. But eventually, I will answer your questions. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.